Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. Today, we've got triple the fun for you because we have three sisters joining us, and it's not the Sanderson sisters. It is Allie, Ariel, and Sylvia joining us to talk about their awesome trip out to Disneyland about this time last year. Actually, it was in the fall of last year to head out specifically for Oogie Boogie Bash. And I know I've had a lot of folks reach out to me over the past month or so asking, Mike, when are the tickets for Oogie Boogie Bash going to go on sale here for 2024? I don't know as of this recording when they're going to go on sale, but I know a lot of folks are super curious about Halloween at Disneyland and specifically about this party. So we talk about their trip traveling down from Seattle and all the fun they had, they did a great tour that you're going to want to know all about. You get access to Walt's apartment, great dining reviews. And then we talk about Oogie Boogie Bash and why it is so special and all the trouble they went through to get those tickets and if it was worth it in the end. Great show today. You're going to have a lot of laughs and also find out about why Disneyland is so special for these ladies. It's a great show. Don't forget today's podcast brought to you by the magic for less travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure for no additional cost to you. Just check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link. When you shop online, that one extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you so very much to our Patreon supporters. You guys make all these shows possible. We could not do this without you. And you can support us as well. Just $5 a month is all we ask. And you get a bonus show for that every week. It's called Mike in the Midwest. Coming over today, we'd love to have you at patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Welcome to episode 2510 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Monday to you. Hope you had a great weekend and we are back here with another fun trip report. And today, super excited for a couple of reasons. One, we have three sisters joining us and they're back. They've been on the show before, so we're glad to have them back. And I'm telling you what. Again, this is another show where you got to check out our YouTube channel, which I remind you, every show is on YouTube, so you can always see the video that accompanies the show. So check it out over at youtube.com slash be our guest podcast because they've got the most awesome headwear from you just got to see it. I mean, they are ready to go with the visuals for this show. I look like a bum. I mean, just in my Francis Howell stuff, I, I came unprepared. I came as a podcaster. They came ready to go, but. We're talking Disneyland today, and we are ready to roll because the question I've been getting over the past month or so is a travel agent, is a podcaster, just as a human being on the street. Mike, when are the Oogie Boogie tickets going to go on sale? And I do not know, but here's the deal. We make things happen here on the BR Guest Podcast because we record this show about three or four days ahead of time. They're probably on sale by now, so you're welcome. That's how we do things here on the show. We mentioned Justin Timberlake last week about it. 24 hours later, he was having the worst day of his life. I'm just telling you, man, you got to be careful what you say here on the show. We have power. But today, joining us, not the Sanderson sisters, which you could see at Walt Disney World during this Halloween season, we have Ariel, Allie, and Sylvia. Ladies, thanks for coming back on the show. Glad to have you up in Seattle way. What's up? Yeah, thanks for having us. Love the waves. We got to talk because it's an audio podcast. It works better. (laughs) That's true. So describe, okay, so each one of you go through and describe the headgear you have on because I kind of made a big deal out of it because it does look awesome, but 90% of our audience just listens, so. I have the original Mickey Fun Wheel uh, ears. Okay, real quick on that, though, since you have the Fun Wheel, uh, the, the, the crazy buckets or the steady buckets, what are you? None. I'm, <laughs> I'm team crazy buckets oh. once in a while. There's no way I could do that. No way I could do that. No. You kind of just need chaos in your life sometimes. Oh. You just <laughs> throw yourself in a bucket and oh. go for it. Dude, I taught second grade and I taught sixth grade. That was enough chaos for 17 years. I'm good. No, I don't need all that. So the other two sisters, though, so you guys steady bucket or the, the swinging buckets? 
steady bucket. Thank I need to keep my correct. food in my stomach. No right buckets. answer. No buckets. Oh my God. You're like, <laughs> no buckets. you're just going to hang out down at like the angry chicken stand or whatever there yeah. down by the bottom or whatever that's called. I've still never eaten there, but I, I, I feel like it's missed opportunity. Okay. Uh, next sister, tell us your name and what your headgear models for our audio listeners. I'm Allie and I have a Marie plushy hat. It's from a Tokyo Disney and I got it online. That thing is, it, it's awesome. I mean, it's very, very, I mean, it's like, not just, you know, like your Mickey cap, it's like full all gear. over, full head gear. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you, you need like the sleeper and you'd be set. Like you <laughs> I need a full suit. Yeah. You could just walk around Disneyland and be like, you know, people would be snapping pictures with you. You know, like the characters. Very nice. And I'm Ariel. I'm wearing the Sorcerer Hero, but though Sorcerer <laughs> Mickey hat, Fantasmic style. So let me ask you, Fantasmic has uh, returned. And I mean, I don't know if you guys have been back. It's only been back, you know, about a month at this point. But uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the, if you guys kept up with the changes, the pirate ship being gone and uh, just they've kind of switched it out a little bit without the dragon, kind of some other stuff. Big Fantasmic our fan. Resident, our Fantasmic uh, number one fan okay, over look, here. Gloria, give it's us thoughts. be the original I do. So you guys have been to World, right? You traveled there yes. too. Yes. So which the debate World, <laughs> or, World or Land? Which one's better? Fantastic World is no go. No, land, dude, that's good. harsh. I, I wouldn't Sorry. say no go. I mean, I, that's that's a little rough there. I like it at World because you got seats, you got you know, it's comfortable. But man, I do like it better at Land. It's more intimate. Yeah, it's fun. I felt like I did not like the pipeline from. Uh, the show straight out the park how you could not just oh they're like go get back you're like it's done you're done your day's over and you're like oh okay that is a good point they kind of flush you after the show you're just like hey, yeah. nice knowing you and get on the yeah. skyliner hit a bus we'll see you tomorrow i just felt like i was waiting for something to happen the whole time at the world phantasmic but i don't i don't know we grew up going to disneyland so we know that show every single update that's happened the pinocchio like little marionette part was awesome and the floats are really cool we just yeah we have a soft spot for the disneyland one no i get it and you have yeah you always have a soft spot for whatever you're used to you got the the nostalgia for it but i'll, I'll tell you what i felt like i was like almost a part of the show i was so close to it when we went out there the first time in, in 22 for fourth of july and it's it's wild because again i've told the story i how I missed that pirate ship sneaking in from the right. <laughs> I have no idea. And Scott knew it was coming the whole time, right? He knew this was coming the whole time. And I mean, I, it could have only been 20 feet away from me where we were standing under that tree right in front of haunted mansion and boom, that cannon goes off. My heart stopped. I was 10 feet <laughs> yeah. off the ground. He was having, a, he was dying laughing. I, I seriously, I took five years off my life, but it was still the greatest <laughs> moment ever. I'm like, oh my God, the pirates got me. It still gets me, even though I know it's coming. Sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and like, there's like a hundred pirates on that ship. It was wild. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, awesome. that's exactly the moments why we go to Disney, right? It's like, oh my gosh, the movie is happening right in front of my eyes, live and in person on the rivers of America. So Hey, let's get talking about your trip, though. I mean, I right there. I mean, God, I love talking Disneyland. So what trip are we talking about? Somebody take the lead. How did this trip come together? Because we're going to be talking about last fall because so many folks right now, it's summer and people are getting ready to go to Walt Disney or Walt Disney World, Disneyland, all these destinations for fall trips. We planned this trip around Oogie Boogie. We said we are not missing this Oogie Boogie ever again. We need to go this year. So we did the whole ticket um drama with the, oh, the queues oh, we God. set up yeah. multiple computers these girls really took care of handling that and we just built our trip all around that one ticket so apparently you guys need to help folks that are trying to sign up for the disneyland half marathon races because <laughs> the same thing unfolded last week when it came time to sign up for the races like uh oh something didn't happen and everybody was oh, waiting yeah. around and the system crashed and nobody got signed up after four hours it was very similar to the experience with getting the ticket so real quick for folks who didn't know the backstory on that somebody fill us in like how, what happened with buying the tickets and how did you finally secure tickets for the party yeah so um ali and i were on team buy tickets for the family and um, we have some family members, our, our cousins and our aunt that are um, pass holders. So mm -hmm. they were able to secure some of our tickets. I think just one of our family 
was able to get on their party for Oogie Boogie. So the rest of us had to wait with the muggles. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so we had like a command center. We had our phones, our laptop, and we were, both of us were on both devices trying to get in the queue. And we were on the queue all day long. And then I think it was probably like, it's it opened at 9 a.m., right? And then I think around three or four. I think that's right. Is when they just, some, like I never made it in the queue and Allie was in the queue for hours and hours. And then about three or four o'clock, they were just like, so sorry, technical difficulties. We will tell you when to come back. Yeah. They didn't say like, come, I think it was come back tomorrow, no? They just said we'll give an update at some point. Yeah, and that's yeah, where, so that, we, as of recording, that's where we are with the Disneyland half marathon like registration. They're like, we will give you plenty of notice, but we we don't know right now. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. You'd so, think they'd have this figure out at least a little bit better. That's what I, I tell everybody I know. They're like, oh, Yo, you you work with Disney, right? This is what I do for a living. I'm like, oh, the, the technology must be great. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, it's like they invent the wheel every time. You know, it's, yeah, they're, 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 it's they have crazy. these awesome attractions at their theme parks. They have cruise ships. They do they right. do the most amazing things, but they can't run a website. Yeah, it's so yeah. scary. Yeah, it's, and they do this all the time. But go ahead. Sorry. It, sorry. No yeah. Rant. So, well, we got we got the email and they said, come back same time next week. We're like, OK, <laughs> said a little prayer, crossed all our fingers. Yes. We even wore like our special like Halloween gear for good luck. I, like, I feel you. I, that's me. Every race sign up. I, I'll do everything. <laughs> I, yeah, what, what do I got to do? Like, what, what's all the lucky stuff? In my house? <laughs> We're all like that now. They've scarred us. <laughs> yeah yeah but we basically just came back the next week did the same thing we had the phone and the laptop and trying to get in there and it went a lot smoother so like right at 9 a.m like the both of us got in a queue and um i ended up getting through first and getting all of our tickets so it was kind of like it's so the energy is so high like once once it's like okay we're gonna let you in we're like oh my god oh my god we're like panic mode running around like how many tickets and then <laughs> So we just, we got all the tickets that, that we were able to, or that we needed. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, we were, we were pretty like, well, what if this doesn't happen? What if we don't get tickets? Are we still going to go? Like, what is the plan here? Like we had to have kind of our backup plan. Um, I don't think we had bought. Yeah. We didn't plan the actual trip until we had the Oogie Boogie tickets. Mm -hmm. So we had no airline tickets. We had no park tickets. Everything was uh, counting on getting the oogie boogie, and luckily we got it. Would so you basically? Would you have gone though without the tickets, without without the hard ticket to oogie boogie? I mean, probably. There's, <laughs> there's so much else to do. I mean, I still would have. I mean, I'd have been disappointed because I'd have seen people. Like I almost would have had to go like during a time where there wasn't a party though, you know, because I wouldn't want to see other people going and I couldn't go. But right, yeah. I'd almost change my heart dates. couldn't handle that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we probably would have still gone, but maybe not at the oogie boogie time. Yeah, frame. that's probably not because I'd have had too yeah. much FOMO. Yeah, seeing other people mm -hmm. go, I'd probably have to go like when there's not a party happening because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna steal some ice tickets. How many? Well, real quick, how many screenshots did you take of that confirmation when you got the ticket? I'd be like, <laughs> work it, work it confirmation. Okay, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm taking one with my computer, but my phone. I'd have like tw my camera roll be like twelve confirmation pictures. Just, yeah, we definitely did sure that, and then like sent it all around to the whole family. <laughs> like, here's everyone's confirmation number. Um, save this on your phone too, yes. and yeah. Yeah, my Dropbox is now full because I've taken so many pictures of my confirmation. So I'm going to ask you, though, about this. Like, why is that worth the effort once we get to it? So we'll get there. So let's talk about the travel. You guys are up in Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. You guys go down. You guys go frequently. How is the travel? I mean, it seems like it would be a pretty easy trip. I've heard not bad to get down to Southern California. Any tips for folks that make that trip? Tips? Um, I would say it's a pretty easy flight. It's for us like two and a half hours, something like that. Um, so we usually book something to do that day, like a meal, something easy, downtown Disney. Just take it easy before we start hitting the parks really hard after that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, our plan was to get there early. Like we were looking at our flight times and we're all about maximizing. I mean, you've heard a couple yep. of our trip reports before and we get, we get there at an ungodly hour. So <laughs> we arrived at like six in the morning because that was on purpose. We were like, we want to make sure that we're there for the maximum amount of time um, for our vacation. So 
yeah, we got we got up at the crack of dawn and made it down to SeaTac Airport. And a lot of people hate on SeaTac, but I don't think it's that bad. But yeah, we flew into <laughs> to <laughs> to John Wayne. Did you, and John Wayne worked. At, that's always the question I get too. Like which airport? Because you got Long Beach, you got John Wayne, you got LAX. You, you know, you go many different options. That works out fine for you guys. Yeah, John Wayne's really nice. It's small. It feels like a tiny little regional airport, which for the most part is, but it's nice to be able to walk right off, get your rental car in the parking garage and drive right off. So it's super easy. Yes. Yeah, similar to Long Beach. Like when we landed at Long, or I think we landed at Long Beach, like I swore we were landing at John Wayne's. We're so close. Like I was like, oh my God, we're like only a hundred feet off the, I was like, which one are we going to? Cause we're so close. Uh, it was crazy. Now tell me about, I got to hear about this though. Cause I don't, I don't know about this. This Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Like, forget Disneyland. Let's, let's that. forget Disneyland for a second. Let's forget that. We'll talk about that in a second. First timers, you said uh, super empty quick service uh, would make it a must. What's yeah. the story? Uh, have, you, have you had chicken and waffles? Oh, I love chicken and waffles. Yes, but I don't know about this Roscoe's. I've never heard of Roscoe's. This is like yeah, Roscoe's, I think, is a chain. In, like, they have a couple locations in California. Um. But yeah, it's just Southern style chicken and waffles. I think the best thing for us was the quality, like the food was super good. It was fairly cheap and it was, um, it wasn't that crowded. Like we walked right in there and we had a table of seven of us. So they nice. were like, yep, no problem. Come on down and have a seat. And yeah. And so this is right near Disneyland. So like in the downtown, like a, like about like by the good neighbor hotels. Like I said, yeah, I think know. it's like a, probably 10 minutes from the gate okay i'll be checking that out over uh disneyland half marathon weekend yeah i, I will say though because we <laughs> we did fly in i think on a weekday but on the weekends i have seen lines around the corner of roscoe's so oh. if you're gonna go there for like sunday brunch maybe get there early enough so where you're not like hangry by the time you get in there because yeah, yeah i get hangry easy so that's that's a yeah. good, good tip there so you finish this day out because I want to make sure we get to all the days with a, a Craftsman Grill eighty yard around seven fifteen. So highlight there was that a good choice? Yes, I think we were kind of bummed. I can't remember what reservation we wanted. We didn't get it, but we're like, let's just try Craftsman Grill. It's what's available. Um, they sat us right by the pool or outside, and it was just like the vacation started instantly. The vibe was there with the pool, our drinks, the sun is out. We have sunglasses on nice. the menu is super fun. We were just like, we were like cheersing. It felt like we were cheersing the whole time. We were just like having <laughs> so much fun. And the, um, the menu had like really cool things. They have a hot dog of the month. And that hot dog was, um, a taco hot dog. That, oh, that man. Time we went. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you just have the sun on you and you're just, just having a great time hearing the kids splashing on the, in the pool. And, um, I would highly recommend it. Nothing we had was terrible. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You put like yeah. wings, wings, bagu burger, pizza, taco, hot dog, mm -hmm. fish and chips, poke bowl. I mean, dude, that's perfect. I'm in mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing, but nothing wrong with any of that. I mean, yeah, they were setting up some live music too. When we were mm -hmm. there, that's a great way to start a vacation, right? Cause you know, oh, yeah. like you could just a good meal, grab a drink if you want to some, Somebody playing some Jimmy Buffett music or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, that's what I like about uh, downtown Disney is they have it staged down there towards the Disneyland hotel end sometimes with whoever playing, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. just, it's great. It just it gives you that vibe. Yeah. You guys did a little shop in there to kind of kick off the trip, it looks like. Yes. And then got going. Okay. <laughs> so now, so the next day, Friday was your Disneyland day. It says two teams. So mm -hmm. tell us about the squads here. What What's up with that? So I'm like team rides like i need to i'm the rope dropper i gotta be there right when they open um so my husband and i we took my dad super early we were there with with the rope i'm with you um hit some <laughs> hit some rides like right away get some breakfast you just can get so much done in that first like hour or even yes. two hours that like the rest of the day we're just smooth sailing and easy going because we already did so much do you, and then real, um, real quick do you, do you go like right to fantasy land at disneyland or right at rope drop we were trying to do well we would normally do like the big rides like the mountains but this time that was closed so we did matterhorn oh. and it took forever for some reason like it took 15 minutes to get through but then we went through fantasy land and then frontier land and all that i just something about disneyland like fantasy land right at rope drop 
it just you you just go from like one to the next to the next to the next. And usually, like characters are walking around. I swear, I feel like mm. I'm like in a Disney commercial every time I'm there. This, <laughs> the first hour, like if you want the most magical Disney like park experience, I tell people Disneyland at Rope Drop is it. That's it for me. And Scott Scott agrees. Like it's it's just crazy because like you'll pop out, yeah. you know, you go like, you go into like Snow White and you'll come out and switch over to go to Peter Pan or poo or you know go over to alice and all of a sudden when you come out of one of the rides go to the next one you might see the stepsisters riding the carousel or see the mad the mad hatter might be walking past or something it's just it's like this is exactly it's like a commercial like but i mean there's the the lines haven't built up yet so you're still having a blast oh man love it but then the matterhorn gets your back adjusted i gotta get ready for that i can't do that i gotta get an hour to loosen up before i get on that sucker i'm old (laughs) i love it we're like we're here we gotta go might as well. I like on. the way you commit to it. Okay, so you have your team going after it, getting it done. How about this other team? Is this teams? You don't have a team sleep in. Please tell me, God, you don't have that, right? No? <laughs> it's not really like sleep in. <laughs> it's more like rope drop is not the priority. It's uh, <laughs> being able to not feel rushed, I think. I don't know. I, for me, it's that kind of like, yeah, we'll get, we'll get there when we get there. Like kind of by very, very easygoing uh very easygoing team you said go with the flow i get it yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but we still were able to do all the rides that we wanted to but yeah like what once we got there and we're like let's go on the matterhorn Allie and and her crew and like oh yeah we already did that we're just gonna go have a churro over here (laughs) like they're like "Eh." we did that 90 minutes ago yeah Yeah. totally we had a a five minute wait you gotta wait 25 minutes yeah whatever (laughs) (laughs) so okay so now sylvia says you guys some of you guys did the the tour so people are always asking about tours at disneyland so give us that experience for folks and would you recommend it so for me i i'm a history nerd love all the backstories facts about a lot of things in u.s history but Disneyland history is really interesting to me. And Ariel is also my sister and supporter and enthusiast as well. <laughs> so she was like, I'll do it. And I, I, to me, a ticket to this tour was about the same as Oogie Boogie. So I'm like, this is affordable um, in the way that I can pay for this. So um, we did it and it was really cool. Our, uh, they take you on a t- quick tour through Main Street and they point out a couple of things. And then they walk you to Walt's apartment. That was worth no the whole thing. Yeah. That's what everybody wants. I mean, that's like the thing Disney nerds like us want to see. Like, yeah. Walt's apartment. That's it. I mean, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Access. So, yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Like, some of the Main Street stuff we already knew just because, like, we've done all that research and, again, history nerds and, and we know most of the things that she was saying. But once we got, we were like, all right let's go to the apartment like when do we get to go to the apartment like the whole time we were just in anticipation and and they brought us backstage for a quick second just to get up the stairs and get up on the um into the apartment itself and we were there for quite a while they were explaining all the furniture and um some of the original things that were still there some of it is um like recreations Mm -hmm. of of stuff that was actually in the apartment they had a really cool fact about the, what was that radio called? I can't um, remember what the radio is called, but they have a really cool fact about that was a reproduction, but the original one has the song that you hear on the outside of the haunted mansion, the kind of like chimey like tones. That's where that came from. Wow. Mm. See, that's kind of, see, I'm a nerd too. Like I love yeah. that stuff. Like just give me all that. But yeah. That, exactly. I, I pay a fortune for that kind of stuff. You're not allowed to take photos, but they do have a yep. photo pass photographer in the apartment with you to have all that photo ops taken care of, just not on your phone. And that, that's true, because like even Pam Forrester, like famous Pam Forrester, Conor, she's co owner of the agency, right? And she has pull with Disney. Same, like she can't even use her camera in there. Like even when you're with Adventures by Disney, same policy mm-hmm. is true. Like they are dead serious about that, but they will take your picture. And, like, yeah, we had a full you. photo yeah. shoot in there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like you cannot use your camera. Like I've heard that from every person, and I'd be scared to death because I get an itchy camera. I like to take pictures. <laughs> don't, don't put it away. No, you know, don't, don't don't get in trouble. I did. I did almost try to like sneak a <laughs> sneak a little photo in there, but they're pretty like on top of you sure. as far as like 
you can't just like go hide in the bathroom or something and take a photo, like selfie in the bathroom mirror. But um, yeah, I did. That was my thought. I was like, well, if I sneak away into the bathroom, maybe I can get a quick bathroom selfie. <laughs> but it yeah. didn't happen. <laughs> They're pretty yeah, slick. Or isn't sure. followed with um, refreshments on the outside patio that he had built with uh, your favorite coat products. Nice. And uh, <laughs> they had a special Walt's Main Street Story cookie with, it was like printed, all cute. Ariel is um, lactose intolerant. So they let her have a snack voucher instead that she could um, use anywhere in the parks. Um, and you want to tell them what we did with that voucher? Uh, yeah, we got, we went to the Tiki, what's it called? Tropical Hideaway. We went to the Tropical Hideaway and we got a Dole Whip swirl. We got food so too. Good. And the employee didn't know how to ring it up. So they were just like, just you, you can have all this food for free. And we're like, woo! That's the best. That's a bonus when that happens. Because you can kind yeah. of see it starting to happen. If you've had that happen to you before, you're like, ooh, this might happen. They might not know how to, yeah. how to catch this thing out. They might just say, just take it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But for the sake of all the people that can't eat the thing that is free, don't abuse that system, please. Mm -hmm. No, I know I get it. But I mean, every once in a while, you know, pixie dust, right? I mean, every yeah. Once in a while, I... <laughs> so it was worth it. Bucket <laughs> list. Highly recommend the tour. That's great. I appreciate that. That's the kind of stuff I love our show because people might not even know it's available. But you know, when we everybody listening to the show would like to do something like that. So it's super cool. Now mm -hmm. I want to talk about your lunch because you went to two of my favorite places: Blue Bayou and Cafe Orleans. Because they both have the Monte Cristo, they both have the Hurricane. <laughs> Just saying, that is Disneyland to me. That's the ultimate meal right there. So give us your quick thoughts on, because uh, I know you guys kind of split up there. But, uh, I mean, those are both great Disneyland, like, experiences to eat in, in New Orleans Square. Yeah, I went to Blue Bayou with just my husband and we split off and I, I asked for the Mike special and yeah. they got me the Monte Cristo yeah. and the Hurricane. <laughs> it's the best. I mean, if, even though the Hurricanes come out of a tapper, I don't care. Like, I mean, don't just don't look. I got because we were sitting by the, the machine. Like it wasn't like mixed or anything. He went over and like, shh, like you would get like a Coke, but whatever. Like a was, Slurpee. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It is. It is. Because Scott was like, did you see him fill up our hurricanes? I'm like, I don't care, dude. We're Disneyland. Shut up. <laughs> You're like, You're ruining the magic. <laughs> I know, seriously. Just don't look. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. Super good. Would recommend. I would say I would give it a, a four out of five only because just the vibe, you know, it's so pretty in there. Like it's a nice, quiet spot away from the heat during the day yeah it is it, it, it i like it, it reminds me of san angela and it, it up got like right mm -hmm. i mean it could be it could be 105 degrees outside three o'clock in the afternoon on tuesday you go in there and it's like oh it's romantic it's cool it's night it's awesome so how about uh cafe orleans that's a great place if you can't get an adr because you can walk up and just usually get the uh where you got to be in proximity of the restaurant like the standby mm -hmm. whatever that's called i always forget what's typically call but you yeah, guys kind of sign did up the adrs but that was kind of the same thing where like ali and, and her husband got a table inside so we did two different reservations so we did um the four the rest of the group on one table and then them two at another what was awkward is they put us between like one table was outside and then we had a window and then Allie and Grant were on the other side. So we're like, and truly like the lights, they didn't turn the lights on outside for a long time. So we were like in darkness, like, like with using our phones your phone, I was gonna say, using your flashlight. And they're like having this lady in the tramp dinner. And we're just like <laughs> <laughs> on the outside. They were probably filming yeah. you. They did, they did have a special menu though for, mm -hmm. for Halloween time. That's oh, cool. yeah. that is funny. It's like, it's like a, like I used to play hockey, like being in the penalty box. Like you're trying to get your, trying to get the other people's attention, like boom, 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 on the glass. Hey, pass the salt. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't give us salt. You so you guys got to see the Halloween fireworks though. And it says zero is flying in the sky. I'm glad that I know who zero is uh, kind of, but uh, so I recommend seeing, because again, fireworks aren't every night at Disneyland for Walt Disney World folks. I mean, they only show some nights because, you know, Disneyland's in Anaheim and kind of in a neighborhood. Was that a, was that a decent show? It's the best. It's one of the, my favorite fireworks shows purely because I love Halloween and it has like all the little bits from like villain songs and of course Zero, super cute flying in the sky. We kind of were posted up on like the right side of the castle so we were able to sneak in and have a really good view from there. 
So you're kind of over by the Matterhorn ish. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. On that side. Nice. And that was a good spot. Okay, cool. Cause I'm always like, I never know where to go at Disneyland for fireworks yet because you know, I, I know I'm a place is a world, but I've, I haven't seen fireworks enough at Disneyland to like have a spot. You know, I go to main street still. And then, you know, sometimes I go back to small world, you know, cause like, people like watch the projections on small world you know when there's fireworks and mm-hmm. it's so confusing to me because i'm like but i'm behind the castle like yeah. i can't mm-hmm. i can't get my brain to wrap around that you know it's like i i, I don't get it all right yeah. so some people, I mean, some it's, people it's have seen the show over and over again they like to watch from galaxy's edge because you can just yep. see the fireworks and they've and, and they've it, added that I special thing too. lately with the like they put new music that just for certain nights, right? The the Gal- the Star Wars mm-hmm. package they did just a little bit ago. It was smart, mm-hmm. but diff- different ways to see the fireworks. Okay, I'll make we could talk about this forever. I love this. <laughs> but the next day, so you guys went to Goofy's Kitchen and did a beach day. So you st- I love this. So you didn't go into the parks. We used yeah. to do this at World all the time. This is exactly what we used to do at World because we used to go to Cocoa Beach for a day in the middle of our trip. We'd always start off with like a with like a character meal in the morning. It's, 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 it, this reminds me of when we were younger. Um, so, how was Goofy's Kitchen? Because I got to tell you, you you ate one of the things that Scott he never ever stops talking about this one item, which I'll tell you about in a second. But how was Goofy's Kitchen? Uh, so, we again we were we grew up in California. We've been to the parks a million times, but we'd never been to Goofy's Kitchen. And I think it was just like budget wise our parents were like this is not in the budget Same. ever we're my parents we got we got Kentucky fried chicken at six flags in the parking lot that was us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like we have to go just get it done like um heal your inner child and just do it and we got a 7 a.m reservation which was like oh, so early. rough it was so early. but we did it and <laughs> i think it was i had a great time it was the first time Goofy's Kitchen had ever celebrated Halloween, so their decor was all new. Um, Goofy had his special Halloween costume, which he was a haunted tree. And um, <laughs> Minnie had her cute little Halloween outfit, and they make sure that you take your photos, kind of like uh, Chef Mickey's, but but it's like really cutely decorated, like Goofy's actual kitchen. Um, I thought the food was really like local to Southern California. There's a lot of Latino there, so we're Latina, so... I was pumped on this food menu. We had the chilaquiles. Okay, that's it. That's Scott's favorite food, but he calls them chiquiles because he doesn't know how to pronounce them. <laughs> so he's like, because he, here's the thing he told me. When we went to Disneyland, this was in the 4th of July of 2022. We went out there for a week, right? And it was my first time going to Disneyland. I was so excited. We all, my family went and his family went. We were there for a week. He's like, man, we're going to Storybook, Storytellers Cafe or whatever, the, the, the character meal there. And he's uh-huh. like, the buffet has these things on them. And he's like, I had them in San Diego too. When I went to San Diego, he's called, he's like, they're called chiquiles. And he's like, they're the best thing you'll ever eat in your life. And I'm like, okay. Cause he's like, I know you like Mexican food and like all kinds of, you know, Latino and, and you know, that kind of food. I'm like, D- I'm in, like, you've already got me sold. And he was right. Like he's like, there they are. He's like pointed at them on the buffet. I'm like, bring them. I, I, and this was breakfast, I think. And I think I had like 10 of them. I mean, it was crazy how many, and he was exactly right, but he doesn't pronounce. So how do you pronounce it for us? Cause he calls them chiquiles. So you're probably it's saying it better. Chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. Okay. You know, we'll go with that. Cause I, I'm, I'm from Missouri. <laughs> I'm never going to get it right. So <laughs> all I know is they are very tasty. They're wonderful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was just blown away that they would offer that. Um, they had pozole, which is Mexican soup, and they had the peanut butter pizza, Nutella pizza, chicken, and uh, chicken and waffles. But the waffles are Mickey shape, of course, and because it was fall, they had pumpkin spice butter for those. And mm. um, I, like with the chilaquiles, I, what was crazy to me is that they were layered with jalapenos, which is like, I don't know, like you know, this is like for children, and you don't want to like make everything anything too spicy. So I'm just, but as a Mexican person, I'm just like, wow, I am so excited to be eating this at a Disney um, establishment. So I agree. I cool. mean, because usually, you know, the, the, the thing about Disney food is people say it's kind of like bland, right? They try, they try to keep mm-hmm. it like right down the middle for everybody bland. And these these did have kick on them even over at uh, Storytellers, right? And, but I mean, I was like, <laughs> I mean, this stuff, at, you know, because it was like eight o'clock in the morning. We were having it, too. I'm like, this is. Like this is, I'm getting away with something, you know, I'm not just having, yeah. I'm not just having eggs and bacon. Like this is great. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I did. I did up. have a little tour with the chef. Cause I told our server, you know, I have a uh, lactose intolerant, you know, what can I eat? 
and and the chef came out and was like you can have this you can have this like so he like walked me around the whole buffet beforehand so that was nice if you have any dietary restrictions you can just like write a note about it and they'll walk you through everything and pb pizza sign me up for that too. Ooh, man that was pretty good. Oh, that was good too. oh mm-hmm. man so laguna beach though is that was that a good choice there for beach day because i know so many beaches in southern california we did we went to the santa monica pier i think and just kind of hung out there that's crazy um we like it it's a it's a beach we grew up at it's a really small cove and there's tide pools and um of course with the the earth changing the tide comes so quickly it'll snatch up your whole picnic set so we stayed as long as we could um but we just missed the sun so much so we just hung out we brought our food and um took took a nap on the beach and we were just hanging out it was southern california day nice all right, so we're going, to make, we're going to kind of skip a couple of these days because I can yeah. get Six Flags. Let's make sure we get this in. One of the other things I wanted to talk about, though, was when you guys went to Napa Rose because that is mm-hmm. something people always ask about. Napa Rose, I mean, fine dining, Disneyland. So tell us about that experience. It was really nice. We were actually celebrating. Um, my sister, Ariel, had graduated, graduated with a project management program certificate. And so we were celebrating her and um, the server was really nice about it. He's like, what are we celebrating? And like, what are we having to drink? There's just so many options and a lot of it is hard to read. I'm like, I don't know what half the stuff is. So he was like, you know what? Like, tell me what kind of things that you like, like what flavors. And then he's like, okay, I'll surprise you. So he brought us out like different drinks based off of like what we answered from his wow. questions. That's crazy. And there was a prefix menu that we didn't do. Um, just because it was a lot of stuff. Um, so we kind of ordered a la carte, but everything we ordered was just like beautifully presented, tasted really nice. The, mm-hmm. the, sh- the server was able to like explain like what went into each meal, like the story behind it. And I believe the chef is the same as Club 33. That's crazy. When I saw that, I mean, mm-hmm. that, that means the chef is, I mean, top of the, I mean, top of the heap. They, they know mm-hmm. exactly what they're doing. And the right. menu changes weekly. That's, that's wild. Yeah, it's a really great like date spot or if you have like something special that you're celebrating. We all dressed up. We're like, bring something nice. Like, this is a nice meal. Like, no yeah. shorts, no t-shirt. <laughs> um, and we just made a nice family date night out of it. And it says, you're kind of, pl- this is very, very leisurely. So you said you guys were there about three hours. So very much a, it's more than a meal. It's more of an experience. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds so cool. Yeah, th- I like. it kind of reminds me of like on the ships, like Remy would be, you know, like the top, top tier on the fancy cruise ships. Like, it, <laughs> that's what Scott says. He goes to that every time and he's like, it takes forever. He's like, it's great because they have so many courses <laughs> and they explain everything. It's like little small, you know, portions. They pair up wines and he's like, but you're in there forever. He's like, it's great though. He's like, but just, you know, you're going to be there forever, but it's an experience. It sounds mm-hmm. very, very similar to what he says. Now, real yeah. quick, because we're kind of talking Disneyland. You guys went to Universal for a day, like just two minutes. Like, what was the best part of going to Universal out in Hollywood? It's maybe different than Florida. So we went specifically because of the uh, Super Mario yep. World opening up there. So we we actually had never been. We always opt for Disneyland, obviously. So and never been to the Florida one, at least us, yeah. the rest of the family. So we got the early the early entry ticket to do the mario world thing and it was fun it was worth it and then the rest of the day we were just kind of bopping around like it didn't we didn't really have like i gotta ride this i gotta get on that we were just like whatever happens happens so i think that was a good plan going into it not having like this really high expectation of what we were going to experience and also i think our experience was like disneyland's the best you know (laughs) (laughs) the universe is not gonna (laughs) not gonna compare some of the stuff was like yeah (laughs) Some of the stuff was like, okay, that was really cool. Like the Harry Potter thing, uh, like the rides were actually really innovative and like not anything that we would have experienced at Disney. So yeah, that was cool. Um, The Jurassic Park stuff was cool. There was like a meet and greet with one of the dinosaurs, Mm -hmm. which is kind of funny. We didn't wait in line for that. We just kind of saw it from the side. But yeah, we just were easy going that day and just seeing what there was to see there. The food, I would say... If you can pack your lunch, pack your lunch. <laughs> <and do it. laughs> yeah, the food is not good there whatsoever. But you guys went to In and Out at the end. I mean, I'm so exactly. jealous. I love, I love In and Out. I love In and Out. 
<laughs> yeah, there's an in and out about 10 minutes down the road from the Universal parking lot. So it's pretty, you literally just go down a hill and then you're at the in and out. So yeah. my dad kills me because he works, he lives 10 minutes from me here in St. Louis, but he works for the Rams. So he goes out for all the games. And he's always like, first thing I do when I land, go to in and out First, last thing I do before I go to the airport, go to in and out again before I come home <laughs> every weekend. <laughs> I'm like, shut up. He's like, double, <laughs> double, double animal style. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Cause I, so good. Okay. So this is why we're here. Oogie Boogie was the day on Tuesday. So again, tell us about the experience. And I'm going to, I'll just up front tell you, like, why is it worth all that stuff you guys went through? You talked about at the beginning of the show, like you guys, I mean, you guys took a day out of your life to try to secure the ticket, so it's got to be good, I hope. I mean, I hope when you get through this, but, I mean, tell us about the Oogie Boogie Bash. What what was it like? I hope it lived up to expectations. We have been to Mickey's Not So Scary as a Halloween party, and then we have, I think we've done a Disneyland Halloween party mm -hmm. before. Yeah, they used to have Not <clears throat> So Scary at Disneyland, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. And Oogie Boogie is incredible. If you love characters, Oogie Boogie has him. Like classic characters that you probably have been missing and you you didn't know you wanted to meet, but you're you're gonna meet them. Like we we let me see. We, we did a lot. <laughs> I think I think in general before you go into I think in general the like w watching a park completely transform like that is so awesome. Mm. Like we were walking around and it didn't. I felt like I just couldn't concentrate on one thing like you're just looking all around oh my god look at that or they like project things on buildings and there's fog coming up from the lagoon and all the like the entire park changes so that's what I think is the biggest like worth it moment of just seeing like I go to this park all the time I know all the rides I know what there is to see but to see it completely flip on its end to be like this is a true takeover of like if a Oogie Boogie took over this park. And so just so everybody knows, this takes place at DCA, not at Disneyland. Yes. So you're over DCA. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. So they have trick-or-treat trails set up, which is kind of like how they do yep. at Walt Disney World, where there's like stations and the, the people put stuff in your baggie, but they're attached to character like meet and greet-ish. They're like stages and they're like improving off of you. So I had like Sid make fun of my costume like ha, ha, like just <laughs> being a bully to me or <laughs> we met like Kingdom Hearts the video game we met Mickey and Donald we met Daisy Minnie Clarabelle as the Sanderson sisters like they had rings on and jewelry and they were like they took their time with us they weren't it didn't feel rushed they were just like you look so cute in mm -hmm. their own way we um met Judge well Judge Doom did like a little performance he's from Roger Rabbit Madame Mim, Ernesto de la Cruz, uh, actual Oogie Boogie, Cruella de Vil, and... And... Oh, he, was the <laughs> he was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> we had to do it to you, Mike. No, that's awesome. I love it. This is why I love this show. So, <laughs> but, so, I have a theory, and Scott and I talked about this. So, things like Jungle Cruise, any any position out there, any attraction out there where it's driven by a cast member always better at Disneyland right because mm -hmm. you're so close to Hollywood right I mean is that is that not a thing that people go out there because they want to become stars they want to be like discovered it, you, not that people don't want to in Florida but I mean you are a hop skip and a jump away from where people are trying to become famous actors and actresses out there I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I think that's what you're seeing right before he became Olaf yeah, yeah true. I mean I think that is I, honestly I think that has something to do with kind of the quality of experiences like the Oogie Boogie Bash and you have these these cast members and, and you know people the, the the level of the interactions are incredible out there they're unreal mm -hmm. with the characters it's unreal yeah it. and the theming too is so like in depth like they had different scents like the Ernesto oh, yeah. de la Cruz was rose scented like through the trail and um boogie boogie had pumpkin spice that's I right yeah. <laughs> that's very popular <laughs> and then in, in the trick-or-treat trails there's multiple stations so if you go see one character you can get up to four handfuls of candy and even at the end they oh, were just right. like trying to get rid of candy they just Full like size, as you're leaving by the way they're just <laughs> dumping candy in your bags 
I and wanted it, to tell them no. It, I was like, this is too much. I have to take this home. Yeah. I know. Well, I mean, a tip people always say is kind of wait to the end or else you're carrying that stuff around all night. You know, you're just like lugging it at the whole party, uh, you know, even at World. So let me ask you this. Okay, so you got all these character meet and greets, you got all this cool thematic stuff going on, you know, fog and different kind of background sounds and loops and visual effects. I mean, that right there is probably worth the price of admission, just kind of getting that spirit of the season. But I mean, it looks like I'm looking at your notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also get a ton of, I mean, just practical like attractions done that would take you forever during a typical theme park day, right? You guys, yeah, I mean, it looks like the guys the got a ton done. Good. That didn't, the boys yeah. of our group were like, we don't care about any of this stuff. We <laughs> want to get on the coasters. We want to get on Guardians as many times as we can. We want to, we want to do all the things and drink as many beers as possible. <laughs> That's I see, I see, I see beers and then I see swings. I'm like, dude, I know. Like, whoa, whoa, They're and crazy. Guardians. I mean, Guardians messes me up too. Yeah, so I don't. They and were, I think at a certain point, Incredicoaster closes for some reason, and. They have were forced to go on the swings. They're like, let's just get on this. And by the end of the night, they were like, the swings is the best ride at <laughs> DCA. And we're like, um, okay. They were just <laughs> that's when they've had too many beers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're cut off. <laughs> yes. Yes. When that's better than Radiator Springs Racers, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me just get so this is so what is the reason though that it was worth like if you had to put it into words for somebody that's looking because again so many people want to do this party that i'm scared that the system's gonna it's gonna happen again here in the next week or two when these tickets go on sale and are you gonna go through the pain again to try to get tickets if 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 it's on you know if it's in the cards to go again what do you say? I mean, was it worth it? Is it worth it to do again? What is it about the party? I mean, what do you say to that? It's definitely worth it. I think if you're a big Halloween person like I am, or if you love villains, or if you want to hang out in that really immersive um, just park experience or get on all the rides, get all the just experience Halloween, like full Disney style, I'd say it's totally worth it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> You said just like me with all the run Disney races. I'm like, <laughs> God, I hate, I'm in such pain. Why do I do this? I'm gonna do it again. Like, why, <laughs> why do I keep doing this to myself? But yeah, we do it again. That's good. Good to know. Okay, so the next day though, it looks like. Do you, tell me, you guys slept in a little bit though the next day, right? A little after the party? No. A no? little bit. Okay. Um, it started. It looks like at nine thirty, so that's okay. Yeah. So this is your park hopper I day. I don't think DCA has rope drop. Mm, I don't know. That's probably why. Yeah. Otherwise, she probably would have done it. <laughs> All right. So give us a little highlights on the park hopping day where you got to do both. It looks like you started DCA and did some. Yeah, uh, we started. We started there because we had a an ADR at Lamplight Lounge for lunch. So we kind of built our plan around that. So that made the most sense to just start that morning there. Um, so, yeah, we were in that main like the Buena Vista Street. So like their main street over there for a little bit, just kind of shopping, getting coffee. Um, we made our way over to the, um, like where the pier stuff is at, there's a Coco family celebration. So it's like Halloween and, and Dia de los Muertos are like around the same time frame. So they had like the whole area kind of set up and they had mariachis and, um, it was super sweet. There's like the, the Coco like puppet show kind of stuff with dancers. And he, he did bring a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just really sweet to see like your culture being celebrated like that. That's um, super cool. you know, like Sylvia said, mm -hmm. California is very heavy with Hispanic communities and um growing up going to Disneyland, we didn't really see that much of it. So mm -hmm. to see it be so like integrated into the park, we were just like, wow, this is amazing. And yeah, that that celebration was was really cool. Um yeah, so we wrote some little like memory cards for the people that we've lost and, and you get to like make that be part of the park now. Like mm -hmm. you tie it onto a little chain and you're like, yeah, anyone can come see this now. So it's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, that um, makes me so happy to hear that that right there <laughs> because that makes it more than a theme park, right? That makes it something that is that is just special. I mean, I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you're seeing your culture there. You're making the connections and... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you shared that because that is super special. That, that makes me happy. I mean, I'm happy for you. That makes me super happy for you. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. 
yeah, I think it's great too. I mean, the, the San Francisco area too is very like um, Asian influenced. So all the food there, there's like the karaage sandwich that we had and there's like a bunch of other like Asian inspired dishes. So it's it's a really cross of cultures, which is cool because that's kind of the point of like California adventure, right? So mm -hmm. the park in itself is like, it's, this is a celebration of what California is, which is all these different cultures coming together, which is really awesome. See, I never really thought about it that deeply. I love this show because I come on here. <laughs> We're getting deep here on the podcast. I love it though because, you know, we come on here and usually I learn like a tip, you know, about, hey, you know, here's how to save five minutes, you know, the, you know, the, in credit coaster line. But this is like even better. Like, this is like, how should you see California Adventure? You know, I just see it as, because I always say DCA, right? But it's Disney California Adventure. And it is, I mean, it's different things to different people. And it's so. That, that means a lot because I'll see the park differently when I go back, you know, because I wasn't mm -hmm. seeing San Francisco in that kind of a, a light. But I will, you know, the next time I go and I'll see, you know, I, I just that, that 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 made me think. And that's 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 more than I was expecting today. And I love it. That's exactly <laughs> I mean, as a former teacher. I love that. OK, so we got it. We're going a little long, but I got to get to this. I'm looking at your notes. You guys hopped over to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just see a, a, a bullet point that says betrayed by corn dogs. And oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know what that means. So I got to know what, how does a corn dog betray you? Did they not have them or <laughs> what, what happened here? We just all had a corn dog this day at different times of the day and all our stomachs hurt. Like oh. we <laughs> felt like we ate rocks. I was, I remember I grabbed my corn dog and I'm like going to racers. I'm like, let's go guys. And I'm like, actually, I need to sit down. I don't feel good. <laughs> So I'm sad because we love the corn dogs, especially at like the little um, the, the, Dumbos, the red wagon. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, Casey's corn dogs is, oh, the, is the one at Disneyland too. Yeah, that's it. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we, I was sad to be betrayed by my favorite snack basically. Yeah, and no and I think we all were. We're like, what the heck? Those corn dogs are rude. <laughs> <laughs> Am I still going to try one the next time? Absolutely though. <laughs> I didn't say, I just think before we, we went live, I was like, well, I would try one more corn dog, <laughs> but so okay. Rude. There's one. There's one corn dog at Downtown Disney. It's a a hot dog inside of a pickle and then dipped in the corn dog batter. So it's like a pickle corn dog. I've seen that. Is it? Is, it's that stand on the way to Disneyland Hotel, right? Mm -hmm. On the if you're walking toward the hotel, the right that kind of stand yeah. thing. Yeah. I, uh -huh. they, yeah. They had a few different kinds that were interesting. I did not try yeah. that because I. The problem with Disneyland, here's the problem for somebody like us that are not locals. Like, you can only have so many snacks. Like, there's so many great snacks out there, but, I, you know, oh, you can gosh. only have, you know, X amount during a week. You know, you can't oh, yeah. you can't constantly be eating. And every night I got to end, a, end the night with a ice cream cone from the Gibson girl. So, yeah. We ate, like, we ate a lot. <laughs> uh, I do too. Trust me. I mean, that's why I run. But, yeah, that's, oh, man, you guys are killing me with all this. Okay, so. You saw World of Color one, so that's kind of the updated show over at DCA. Do you guys like it? With any hints and tips there? Mm, it, I think it was very like emotional. It, the theme is World of Color one, where one action makes so many other things happen. So the highlight is, you know, Remy did one thing, and now his life has changed. Or, um, I don't know, like Luke Skywalker was brave and now he saved all this. And it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what the theme is. So we're just like, oh, it was just hitting the heartstrings. <laughs> and um, the only tip we have is to try to get as close as you can to the front. So go there early, as early as you can. Um, because we were in the back of the front, um, the, the, first the lower tier. level. Yeah. yeah. And we could not see anything. We're short people and we could not see anything. So if you <laughs> could even get like the second tier in the front, you, you're golden. Um, we've done the, what's it called? The soaking section? The splash zone. Splash zone. Yeah. That, if you don't mind getting wet and you're going back to your room, it's worth it. I, I don't mind the splash. You do get wet. You <laughs> yeah. get wet for real. No, so when I was out there with Scott, we got, we waited forever. We were on the rail. Like we were in the splash zone on the front. We were the very first people on the rail. Like I had my hood on because it was a little chilly that night. I had a jacket on. I had a hood on. I'm like, how wet am I going to get? Like, what are we talking about here? Like. <laughs> I mean, it's it's comparable to like Fantasmic being in the front at Walt Disney World. I didn't get that wet, 
I mean, it, it depends how is the winds blow. Just short, such a short amount of time that they do the water screen. Yeah. World of Colors the entire time. Yeah, that's true. But I didn't <laughs> so get like soaked. Spray I mean, is constant. Yeah, but I, I thought I would get drowned. Like I didn't get drowned or anything. <laughs> it was it you was it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> it. I'll say it was worth it because the show was awesome. Like I the music with World of uh, World of Color the the music the color like. And I know it's called World of Color, right? And they named it really well because, like, the uh-huh. colors pop on that water. Like, I don't know how they make it so rich. It's mm-hmm. it, They do it so well. I love it. I mean, as an Illumination yeah, fan, really though, show. Too, it's a good show. It's a really good show. I wish they'd bring that to Epcot, but that's just <laughs> I don't know neat. if you know, but during the day, they, like, test it a little bit. Like, they do a little bit of, like, the jets off and on. And I've heard, I haven't actually seen it myself, but I've heard that on the bridge where Lamplight Lounge is, um, conductor Goofy will come out and start mm. to. No way! Yes. That's, that's, that's what I've heard. That. I haven't actually seen it. But. Oh, I'd love. I, you know, I'd be filming that because that'd be super. Oh, cool. right. yeah. <laughs> so now you guys wrapped up with racers. So are are you guys big fans of Radiator Springs? I mean, obviously, that, that's my Cars Land is my favorite land of any land at all the parks, and I, Radiator Springs Racers got to be a top like three ride, maybe top ride ever. Yeah. I think it is like the top ride at DCA. Like we don't get on Guardians. It's like too intense for us. Yeah. We love Incredicoaster, um, but Racers is just so well themed. Yes. And I love racing the other car next yep. to you. It could be like other parts of your family. It's competitive. It has everything. Mm-hmm. The yeah. views. It's just a beautiful ride. I'll smack talk strangers for real. I'll just be like, look, you're going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is personal. <laughs> Every time, Cruz and I, we're, we're, we're beating you right now. Or whoever car I'm in, you know, Lightning, we we're, we're got you. We're got you. Yeah, uh, that whole area is pretty cool. Oh, and we did awesome. do the Shaboom one night, mm-hmm. and it was Halloween time. So they started Shaboom, and then they did I Put a Spell on You, mm-hmm. and that was cool. cool. Yeah, and if you don't know, Shaboom's like right at sunset at the kind of the corner out in front of uh, Flo's V8 Cafe in Cars Land. Just kind of hang out there. Look at your phone and see what time the official sunset is. Go there about 15 minutes before sunset, and it's a thing. Like, all the lights come on, and cars line. It's so cool. Like, yeah. you, you're like, oh, who cares? They turn on the lights. No, dude, it is awesome. Go. No, it's, it's, it's so cool. <laughs> like, it's, it's, again, you'll love it. It sounds, when we say it out loud, you're like, that sounds so dumb. I'm not leaving whatever I'm doing to do that. Yes. Yes, you should. It's so cool. <laughs> It's awesome. At least once. Just do yeah, it once. Yeah. But I do it every time. Like, I'm like, you yeah. know, when, I, when I'm with people, I'm like, oh my God, the sun's setting. We got to get over to Cars Land. It, it's a shaboom. And everybody's like, chill out, dude. We did it last night. We did it the night before. We're good. We can stay at Disneyland. I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to miss it. I'm kind of mental like that. Okay. So this was your last day, uh, Thursday, because we, we were way long. But who cares? This has been so much fun. Um, so you guys kind of wrapped up, you went to Trader Sam's, but during the day and you said the vibe a little bit more chill, that makes sense during the day for kind of a, I mean, it's a bar. I, I thought it would still be wild in there. Like, you know, when they're like hollering, like, oh, the ship's going down, it's a storm. <laughs> I was like, when is that happening? Yeah, it the was day, too the chill. Day shift cruise like, a little, I still a want, mellow. It was a thir- <laughs> it was a Thursday during the day. I mean, yeah, but I, I get true. it. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere and it's vacation. You know, yeah. I was yeah. even in the chair. There's spoiler. There is a chair that does something if yes. you sit in the right one. And my chair had like a box around it. I was like, ooh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And didn't it didn't. Happen. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, no, no shenanigans were happening. That's that's what my issue is. <laughs> and I just we got the magic chair. Nap, though, right outside when we were waiting for our table. There's mm-hmm. some really nice chairs. So Disneyland Hotel, actually, I, I would say if you need a nap spot, get away and be, get oh, like some quiet in. Just walk over to Disneyland Hotel. Oh, that that's where I stay when I go out there is Disneyland Hotel. And I've fallen asleep in those chairs right outside. <laughs> <laughs> so just just kind of just sitting there. Like we were just hanging out one night and just kind of <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> Um, so you guys kind of wrapped up before we went to the airport, a little more shopping at downtown Disney and had some beignets. I mean, what a way to close out. I mean, oh, great mm-hmm. stuff. Man, what a trip. So yeah, yeah, it was cool. We just so happened to be at the Disneyland hotel the day they were doing like a soft opening of that new DVC tower. Yep. So we kind of just wandered over and like, what's going on over here? So we got to check out the lobby and the pool and all that before they officially started all that, uh, the openings of that. That place is so awesome. I had a reservation to stay there for the races in January, but then I was like solo. So I felt guilty that my wife and kids weren't with me. So I canceled and stayed at a good neighbor hotel. 
probably a good oh, move. Gosh. Even though I know I have one of the little I was waiting studios. For you to say, I felt so bad, but I stayed there anyway. <laughs> <sighs> no, I didn't want it. Because about it, the problem is I post so many pictures on social media. As soon as I'd have started posting the pictures of how beautiful that place was, I'd have been killed. So <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm just going to post like a basic picture of a basic hotel room where I'm staying across the street. At, I think it was called the Grand Legacy. It worked great. Like it was just a plain oh, hotel. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was perfect spot. Like the races started basically in the parking lot right behind my room, mm. which was great and perfect spot. I mean, it also kept my everybody happy because it was just a basic hotel room. I wasn't like, you know, Daddy Warbucks and up, you know, living in a brand new hotel room at Disney Disneyland Hotel, which was, those things look too nice. Anyway. So we got to wrap, but what do you guys have on the horizon? You guys going to do this again? I mean, somebody, I guess, has to have a big celebration. Is somebody graduating or getting married or what, what we got? If somebody's got to do something big here so we can have another bash. What's what's up? <laughs> the next big thing is we are waiting for Disney to announce what characters will be at the next Oogie Boogie. That will to, be dependent. Yeah, so on. depending on who will be there, we may or may not be doing this again. Yeah. Okay, so who are you holding out for? I mean, what, who would who would tip the scales in your favor? I think some classic villains. Like, I, I mean, not no one probably agrees with me, but maybe like Frollo or. <laughs> I've, or never, like I've never heard of that person. I have, I mean, not only do I not know who, 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 who? Frollo from Bugs Life. Oh. See, I don't even know He's who that is. The I've seen back of though. Notre Dame. Like, <laughs> okay, I know that person. <laughs> Yeah, mine is Prince John from Robin Hood. Okay, you guys go deep into the catalog. I yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, we need we need vault characters <laughs> yes. to to tilt the scale for us. Disney, you need to listen. This is good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, I appreciate it. It's been so much fun. I've had such a good time. And just, you know, we, we've been all over the place. I've been laughing. I've been like, wow, that's deep. Uh, you know, great <laughs> tips. I mean, just all over the place, but uh, I sure appreciate your time here on a Monday and what a great way to start the week. And it has me excited to get to when it's not a hundred degrees, it's fall. We can have these nice fall foods, nice snacks, and just uh, get ready for Halloween. They'll be here before we know it. So ladies, thanks so much for the time and hope you got uh, good luck in getting those tickets if it happens again this year and, uh, you know, get into the queue right away. But thanks for taking the time. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, thanks for having us for the third time. Yeah, thanks, hey, Mike. thanks, Mike. We'll make it four times. We'll do it again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, don't forget our show brought to you by The Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, or Adventures by Disney Vacation for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. That one extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. It's BeOurGuestPodcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. You guys make all these shows possible. You can support us as well, just $5 a month, and you'll get a bonus show every week called Mike in the Midwest. Coming over this week, it's Patreon.com slash BeOurGuestPodcast. We have the place you need to be. Absolutely no cost to you. We have over 920 listeners hanging out there all the time from all around the world. We talk Disney. We talk sports. We talk life. We talk about all kinds of stuff. There's the best Disney fans and, uh, you know, no ads, no nonsense, just fun Disney talk. Coming over to the BOGP Clubhouse. It's at BeOurGuestPodcast.com slash Discord. We'll be looking for you this week. It's so much fun. And we'll have a live show this Sunday night. So give us a call and come on the show. Scott, still in Europe. I think he's in Norway looking for Anna and Elsa or on a fjord or something or seeing a fjord. or I don't know what he's doing, but he'll have a vlog about it, I'm sure, when he gets back. So it's just going to be you and I. So give me a call. 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, 4 o'clock, I guess it would be out in Seattle for all of our West Coast listeners there. So give me a holler. This Sunday night will be on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. All right. I'm on the social media at BR Guest Mike, Instagram, Twitter, and Threads. So give me a follow there. And that's about it. So we'll be back again on Wednesday with more of your listener questions. But until then, oh, also special guest this week on the shows, Simon from the UK. If you remember about a couple months ago, we had Simon. He did a trip report. It was crazy. Everybody loved Simon because he had his son, Sully, who was hitting. I think he's like five years old. And apparently he was showing his belly and hitting on ladies at the pool. We had all kinds of wild stories. He's coming on. We're answering list of questions with Simon from the UK on Wednesday. And then he's going to stick around on Friday. We're going to talk about traveling from the UK and all those special circumstances. So big week here on the show. Excited for that. We're also going to take your calls on the phones, too. 
All right, we're jumping out of here. We'll be back again on Wednesday with Simon. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. You've been listening to the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. If you have questions, comments, or would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you real soon.